Shalom, shalom. We give all praise and honor and glory to you. How about Shimmy Shai by Shimu Kakadash? Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone. Peace and shalom to the elect that's pushing out this word throughout the four corners of the globe. In sincerity and in truth for the edification of the house of Dawah Dawah, we do these lessons. Shalom to you. It's your brother Shema Moth from the D.C. camp. Hope you're in good spirits. Um... I was just looking up this word, uh, you know, I wanted to know what it was, be, um, you know, in a blue letter. I wanted to look it up uh, also in Edamon. But, you know, I use this, we use this word, you know, because of the scriptures. And I, you know, just never really tackled it um, and brought out a lesson uh, about it. But uh, in the Bible, this is the blue letter. And when you search on the word renown, I just want to look up at this word. Um, like I said, it's in the scriptures. It's it's a part of the Hebrew. Right. And uh, and it's mentioned se uh, seven times in the scriptures. The first scripture is uh, Genesis, the sixth chapter, talking about uh, the giants that was in the earth in those days. And after that, the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them. The same became mighty men, which were of old men of renown. So I want to look up that word renown. What I see in it, it was mentioned seven times, and I went to number 16 and 2. Um, and, you know, I, I read all the scriptures, uh, you know, according to, you know, uh, to uh, read it in uh, read it in context, so I could get a better understanding of what renown was. But I looked at this number sixteen and two, and it says, "And they rose up before Moses." Let's let's go to this. Let's go to the first verse. It says, "Now Korah, the son of Izar, I Izar, Izar, the son of Kohath, the the son of Levi, Dathan." And Abiram, the sons of Eliab, and On, the son of Peleth, sons of Reuben, right, took men. And they rose up before Moses with certain of the children of Israel, 250 princes of the assembly, the assembly of, uh, of the Israelites after they came out of, out of Egypt. So Korah. Uh, Dathan and uh, Abiram was so it's so funny that the uh, the apostles of Tahar had, had did a video and he couldn't remember the third men that rose up against uh, um, against Moses, you know, with uh, certain men and it, and it says here that they were princes and it says two hundred and fifty princes of the assembly, famous in the congregation. Men of renown, just like the men of renown took the daughters of men in, uh, in Genesis. So when you look up this word renown, both uh, the Edamon as well as the blue letter, you look up this word renown. What does renown mean? And that's the whole point of how I just made a lesson out of, out of this word. It says Shem, H. 8034 Shem Shem this is one of the sons of Noah this is his name Shem so what does Shem mean Shem right means name this is why you got the so-called Jews saying Hashem the name but what does name mean is name just it doesn't just mean name what I want to give it away but What's in a name? This is the whole point of this is the totality of the lesson that I that I came up with now. The totality of a name. When you give a get a name for yourself, it could be a bad name. You could be a jailhouse dude that everyone knows you in prison, or you could have a famous name, like if if you say Denzel. If you say just that word, you don't even have to mention his last name. The word Denzel, right? His name precedes him. 
So when you get, read the scriptures and you understand what renowned is, we're going to continue on. This is the whole point of the lesson. It says reputation, right? Fame, glory, monument and memorial, something to remember. Now, it could be remembered as a bad name or it could be remembered as a good name. This is the whole point of renown. It means Shem. This is what Shem was. Sure, you got Ham and Japheth, but Shem is who we come from. We supposed to be of that reputation, that memorial. So should our name or should our renown or should our um, a reputation be for good or for bad? And this is the whole point of the lesson. Again, going down to the Strong's definition, it says, perhaps rather from 70, 7760, through the idea of definite and conspicuous position, an appellation as a mark or memorial of individuality. Your fame, your reputation, supposed to precede you in this truth. When it comes to Yahweh Bashem Shai, when he's looking at you, what name do you carry? Do you have a name, right, that when Israel hear this name, you think of things that's not good? You know, you get a name. Yes, you have a name. Everyone knows you have this fame, but is the fame for good? Or is this fame and reputation for bad? You see? And this is the whole point. Um, Want to go down. It was, uh, oh, in the Edamon, right? Name, reputation, fame, glory, memorial. It says, as a mark or memorial of individuality by implication, honor, authority, character. So this character precedes your name, how you're known as. You could be known as a hard person. You could you know, all adjectives describes the noun. You could be hard. You could be soft. You could be uh, uh, nice. You could be helpful, right? Or you could be a damn demon, or a guy. You, people don't shouldn't be around you for long, because some of your attributes rub off on them. This was happened. This this happens to a, a name like Cora, Dathan, and Abiram. When you go back, they made a name for themselves or try to make a name for themselves, and went against Moses, the anointed. So when Cora, uh, Dathan, and Abiram went against Moses, they made a name for themselves. They're mentioned in the scriptures. They're mentioned as not as as ones who. You shouldn't be like, because their memorial, their memory, or their reputation is not a good reputation. You see? And that's the whole point. What, what's your renown? What are you known for? What attributes you carry with you when, when someone hears of your name? You see? So, and on a totality... Right on a totality, what is Israel's name? What what what's the name of Israel when it comes to their renown or they more memorial? Are they on the good side or are they on the bad side? Right, and this is the whole point. Let's get Deuteronomy twenty six. Deuteronomy twenty six. What are you supposed to? How do you get a name? How do you get a name and what name are you going to carry with you? Deuteronomy 26 and 16, it says, This day the Lord, Yahweh, thy power, have commanded thee to do these statutes and judgments. Thou shalt therefore keep and do them with all thy heart and with all thy soul. Thou has avouched, key word, the Lord, Yahweh, this day to be thy God to be their power, be thy power, and walk in his ways, and to keep his statutes and, and his commandments and his judgments and 
to hearken unto his voice. And Yahweh has avouched, key word, thee this day to be his particular people, as he hath promised thee, and that, and that thou should have keep all his commandments, to make thee high above all nations, which he had made. And we knew Deuteronomy 7 and 6. It says, to make thee high above all nations, which he had made in praise and in name and in honor and that thou mayest be a holy people unto Yahweh thy power as he has spoken. Now, this is the way you get the memorial. This is where you get the good vouching for. This is one you get the good reputation. When you do all these things, right? You follow the voice. You do the law, statute, commandments to the best of your ability. But I wanted to look up this word of vouch because it said the Lord has a vouch thee and you have a vouch the Lord. So when we look up this word of vouch, right? Just simple. A vouch, a mar in the Hebrew to say or speak utter. So not only we said that the Lord, uh, Yahweh is our power. Yahweh, our power, said that we're his people. It says here, to answer to, to say in one's heart, to think and command, to promise and to attend, intend, to be told, to be said, to be called, to boast, to act proudly, vouch. When people say, I vouch for him, it's the same thing. I said that he's my man's. He's good people. He's all right. Oh, you have him in your house. He ain't going to steal from you. I vouch for him. This is the same thing. You act proudly upon this man's reputation and the man's reputation supposed to continue by following the law, statute, commandment. You don't steal from your brother. You don't take his wife. You see, you act accordingly according to the law, statute, the commandments that you said that you was going to do. All Israel said that they was going to avouch. They said they was going to avouch that he is the Lord and we're going to do what he say do. Answer, to call, to tell, right? When you go down to strong definition, it says, appoint, bid, boast, self, call, certify, challenge, charge, commandment, commune, consider, declare, demand, desire, determine. And it goes on and on. Plainly promise and publish and report. This is why you do your videos. This is why um, Paul wrote the letters because of the, of the desire that he had when the Lord showed him the light, when he took uh, um, the scales from off his eyes. That, that, that he was going to preach what Yahweh had told him to do. He declared it. He had to tell it. Jeremiah said it was a burning in his stomach, burning in his gut that he had to tell the truth about Yahweh Bashem Yahweh and what he has done for his people. The prophecies that he kept, the prophecies that was going to come. The things he said he was going to do, talking about the Lord, Yahweh Bashem Yahushai, what he was going to do. If you don't follow my ways, you're going into captivity. He avouched of the Lord, just like you're supposed to avouch to the Lord. So your name can be famous. So your name can be declared as righteous when people mention you. Right? Um. Deuteronomy 7 and 6, of course we know. Deuteronomy 7 and 6, because of that, for thou art a holy people separated, cleansed unto the Lord thy power, Yahweh thy power, the Yahweh thy power have chosen thee. This is what he want for you. 
to be a special people unto himself. No other people, no other people was chosen to be of him. This is a, this is a, this is a one of, a, one of 18 nations. This is one of 18 nations that could be the Lord's. And he chose Israel. Why? It says above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Don't get mad. This is what he chose. This is your creator who chose Israel for himself. It said the Lord, Yahweh, did not set his love upon you, nor chose you because you were more in number than any people. For you were the fewest of all people. But because Yahweh loved you and because he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers hath the Lord brought you out of the out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of bondmen from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And he's going to do the same thing once again. Take us out from under Pharaoh, the king of Babylon, the beast, NATO, the, the, uh, uh, the RFID chip, which is the mark of the beast. All these things he's going to rescue you from. Why? Because he made an oath. He made a promise. He vouched. He avouched. He said it. He declared it. He called it. This is, the, this is what it is. This is why he's known as the renowned. All praises to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh this is Psalms 105. Psalms 105 and 8. Psalms 105 and 8. He had remembered his covenant forever. He don't forget the word which he had commanded to a thousand generations, which covenant he made with Abraham and his oath unto Isaac. He confirmed the same unto Jacob for a law and to Israel for an everlasting covenant, not to be broken, saying unto thee, will I give thee the land of Canaan, a lot of your inheritance, when they were but a few men in number, yea, a very few, and strangers in it, when they went from one nation to another, from one kingdom to, an, to another people, he suffered no man to do them wrong. Yea, he reproved kings for Israel's sake. We reading Daniel now uh, in our camp. We reading Daniel, you know, briefly going over some things in Daniel specifically. And he reproved Belshazzar, Nebuchadnezzar, Asuras, Cyrus, he reproved all of them for Israel's sakes. He reproved the lions. He, he even reproved the, the fire that was in the furnace uh, against the whole three holy children. This is Yahweh's doing. Where it says in the furnace, it was like a mist, like a dew, raindrop mist in the fire where their hair, clothes, wasn't even scorched, smelled, or burned. This is renown. This is the name. Saying, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. This is what he declared. This is what he avouched. What can you say, what can you say about that? You can't. This is the top. This is the tippy tip top of what renown is. You follow, you do, you say, you call, you mention his name and what he did for Israel. How you do that? Let's go to uh, 145 Psalms. 145 and 6. I'm sorry, 149, 149, 149, 149. Psalms 149 and 6. It says, Let the high praises call halalium, Yahweh Shemel Shai, of Yahweh be in their mouth 
and a two-edged sword in their hand to execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishment upon the people. We doing this verbally and they shook. He is shook. Why? Because we just praising call halalium to the Yahweh, our power. We call it. We making it known. We're not hiding it. The three holy children spoke with one voice. What? Call halalium, all praises to Yahweh Bashim Shai. They didn't pick up sword. The spiritual sword is our mouth. The sword is our spiritual mouths. To bind the kings with change and their nobles with fetters of iron, to execute upon them the judgment written, avouched. This honor have all his saints. Praise ye the Lord. Now, there's going to come a time, let me not be remiss, that this is actually going to happen physically. Trust and believe. Why? Because he said it. We know that we can't execute with no arms or uh, uh, swords and guns and missiles or RPGs. That's not our blessing. Our blessing is just to sing the praises. That's all we have to do. That's all we have to do. Zephaniah. Uh, no, let me go to uh, Jeremiah 33. Jeremiah <clears throat> 33 and verse uh, let's start at 4 for thus saith the Lord the power of Israel concerning the houses of this city and concerning the houses of the kings of Judah which are thrown down by the mounts and by the sword see they actually did that physically to us now they come to fight with the Chaldeans but it is but it is to fill them with dead with the dead bodies of men whom I have slain in my anger and my fury for all the, all whose wickedness I have hid my face from the city behold I will bring it health and cure and I will cure them and will reveal unto them abundance of peace and truth promises on top of promises on top of promises and I will cause the captivity of Judah and the captivity of Israel to return, which means to, uh, when he says turn to captivity or return to captivity, which means free them. And will build them as at the first, when he first gave it to us, when we became a, 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 a well-known, when we uh, went up uh, on um, the city of A or I, and where Rahab was, Jericho, after Jericho. When we came upon the cities, they, told, they said that we were famous by our power. This is what makes us famous, our power, our God, who we worship, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. You don't get try to get a name of yourself. You follow all he said was follow the law, statute, commandments, and judgments, and you will be a holy people. If you don't, all these curses shall come upon you. That's Deuteronomy 28, verse 1 and verse 15. You'll be a blessing if you follow, or you'll be a curse if you don't. Real simple. But he's going to return and build as the first and I will cause and I will cleanse them from all their iniquity whereby they have sinned against me. And I will pardon all their iniquities whereby they have sinned and whereby they have transgressed against me. And that shall be to me and it shall be to me a name of joy, a praise and an honor before all the nations of the earth which shall hear all the good that I do unto them. See? As the first, as it was before. You can't get past this, man. How are you going to creep up into our blessing and try to get part of this joy, part of this name? This is only for Israel right here. This is what we're speaking of. So when the Lord came back, 
That was the cleansing. Washing of water by what? The word. It says, Before all nations of the earth, we shall hear of all the good that I do unto them, and they shall fear and tremble for all the goodness and for all the prosperity that I procure unto it. Talking about Israel. All of these things, they're going to fear and tremble because of our goodness. Roe reversal, baby. This is what's coming. Right now, we, 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 uh, uh, our face is wax pale. But we coming up. We coming up. Zephaniah, last scripture. Zephaniah 3. Zephaniah 3 and 19. It says, Behold, at that time I will undo all that afflict thee, and I will save her that hateth and gather her that was driven out. Talking about Israel once again. And I will get them praise and fame in every land where they have been put to shame. At that time will I bring you again, even in the time that I gather, I will gather you, for I will make you a name and a praise among all the people of the earth when I turn back your captivity before your eyes, save your how about That name is going to be to be restored. The renown, the memorial, the famous. These are all the things that's coming back to Israel. The name, so important. The fame, the reputation, the glory. Marked as a memorial. Implication by honor and authority and character. Give all praise and honor and glory to Yahweh Shimei Till next time, Shalom.